Hey everybody, good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this, good evening, whatever. We're in Novi Sad, Serbia, and I think you're going to be pretty intrigued with this video today. We're meeting with a couple of American expats that are living here in Serbia that have been living here for four years, and they've got a really great budget to share with you. So if you've wondered how expensive or inexpensive living in Serbia might be, specifically Novi Sad, stick around. I think you're going to be intrigued and you're going to like this video. So this is the outside of Paula Mary's building. It's in a suburb of Novi Sad. We got there, I took the elevator up to the top floor. Julie decided she was gonna be healthy today and she took the stairs, so we had a little bit of a race. She won. So here we are on the top floor. Yes. Let's uh, go visit with Paul and Mary. Hi, Hi Julie. Good work. Hey. Hi. hey guys. Welcome. Thanks for having Welcome us guys. over. Our pleasure. And, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing your home and talking to you about your budget. So I, uh, I, if I, you want to... I hired a professional tour guide. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mary. Okay. And come see our house. Super. Thanks, um, Mary. Downstairs, as you can see, we have this large area that we've chosen for our um, kitchen and um, entertaining area. Um, I love that it's so full of light. It is. And we love that we have two terraces, one here off the kitchen and one off the living room. So you have so two balconies. Two balconies, yes. That's fantastic. Yeah, it gets lots of natural light in here. Uh, and then if you come in the rest of the downstairs is a um, living room, but in Serbia, it serves a purpose as a bedroom. So our couch has a pull-out couch, or pull-out bed, but you still have one more balcony, which we have a grill, so we're able to do some grilling here. Oh, nice. I like how the windows open at the top. Yes, That's and, and the doors do as well. So, oh, you so they can just get lean some back. nice fresh air in here. Yes. Um, the first floor of our apartment is quite noisy because of the traffic, but most of our life is upstairs. Um, so, you ha we also have for guests the bed and a full bathroom. And you got a tub and a shower. And you got a fridge in here or a freezer? Um, this is a freezer. Um, we are Americans, and uh, we traditionally you would have your washer hook up here, but um, we have another hookup upstairs that I'll show you. So we opted to put the freezer in here. Smart. Um, in our last apartment. We have it out on the balcony, but we don't have a, a storage closet here. So, okay, well the rest of the place is upstairs. So, but before we go, I should tell you, this is the traditional size of a Serbian apartment. So, the kitchen would be underneath the steps. You would have, um, so the plumbing would be run different. Then you would have your living room, dining room. This would be a great room. And then if it's a one bedroom apartment, you'd have the one bedroom in the living room. Okay. okay. Lots of people um, have their kids in the separate room and their living room pull out couch is their bedroom. So oh, they don't this. have a door to close behind them. Oh, wow. So this is, apartment. we've had different, we've seen different apartments with um, different so kinds of stairs. Thankfully, we did not get an apartment with a uh, spiral staircase, but we have one of these, so be careful. Uh, right foot first. It's just right foot first, and right left, right left. Well, that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, so they're... It keeps it from being too steep. Very nice, I like that. So, um, but again, open back, so there's lots of light flowing through, and You've actually entered, my husband and I came here to run a humanitarian aid organization. And we have opted to have our offices in our home. Okay. So 
you're seeing our home and our office. And this is my husband's cubby as he has uh, created this loft space as his office. Oh, that's cool. That's and nice. on the oh, other yeah. side of the shelf, he has a den, kind of, with his rocking chair and, you know, his reading lamp and everything. So, um, and then we have a full bath again. This one is with a shower. And like I said, we've just put all our laundry facilities right in here. Oh, so I don't have to lug towels and sheets and all of that. So you furnished Super. all of these pieces then? Everything. Um, the, we were fortunate that all of the, uh, the uh, medicine cabinet and the sink were, oh, were here, but this piece came with us. Okay. Still struggling to get the uh, I'm taking it from the moving. So again, it's not solid. I like how the beams are so that you can get some light all the yes. way through the house. I really like With the apartment. skylight. So then we have our two bedrooms. This is our living space for our bedroom. Um, we, did a, we did some painting when we got here and then just filled it. Ikea was our friend is that all while cabinetry? we came. This is all cabinetry. We had a friend who um, built this for us. How so this is our attic space. That's smart. We we did this too. Yeah, we, we did something <laughs> like this in our Montenegro home. Uh -huh. And it's a great insulator from the from the wind and everything. Smart. So Mr. Triller just has to watch his head. So this is all Ikea? It's all Ikea. It looks fantastic. It's beautiful. I love this. Look at the cubbies. Oh yeah. So you can have a reading light and everything. That's um, great. So yeah. Um, it's very comfortable and oh, like it, it's great. and it's quiet up here so we don't hear because of the angle of the roof and the insulation of the cabinets we don't hear the drop i love it i love how you have made these offices out of an area that isn't really an office well, this is cool and then this is my office craft room all the things i do room um so would this I'm, normally be a bedroom this would mm -hmm. normally be a bedroom yes okay. Uh, and, a, and a good size one yeah. for Serbian standards. Sure. So, you know, we learned the lesson that we had to ask for a four bedroom apartment and it usually only comes with something that's a two story. So, okay. um, because we never thought, they kept showing us smaller places. And we're like, oh no. That's good to know. <laughs> so you hours. have to count the living room as another bedroom. Okay. So that's our home. Uh -huh. We have air conditioning and heating here. Um, uh, this part of town, uh, we're in Nova Declanara, is the section of town, and we are still under the city system, where it is quite warm downstairs because it's all the hot water pipes that we just pay, for, and we'll go over that in our budget, how we pay for our heating. But it is interesting that Americans are used to being able to use the thermostat to regulate it. No, that's why we have our windows open. We regulate it with cold air coming in oh, to circumvent here. the temperature. We've got uh, Paul and Mary with us today, and oh. Paul worked really hard on his hair today, so feel free to leave a comment about what you think of the do. <laughs> but Paul and uh, Mary, um, we're really excited to, that you're letting us come into your house and check things out and to talk to the viewers about your monthly budget here in Serbia. and. You know, so far what you've shared with me, I'm pretty impressed, but I know you've got some deeper details that you can provide for us. And um, again, thank you for the walkthrough of the home. That's great. And, uh, you know, I guess first off, what kind of rent are you paying for this beautiful little place here? Uh, this in US sellers, it's 480 a month. Wow. Four, $480? Right. Unfurnished. I mean, completely unfurnished, but yeah, 480 That's nice. And it's a 12-month contract? Uh, it's kind of a month to month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're okay. very, they're pretty, pretty liberal about that. It, yes, we have a, a lease, but we've never renewed it. We've been here for, in this place now for just over three years. Is there a deposit required when yeah. you move in? Okay. Yeah, there was a month deposit and a security deposit, which is yes. pretty normal. Okay. Um, we go through a, an agent, you know, uh, so we, I've never met the landlord. No. You know, uh, we just pay the rent to the agent and they're happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
That's that's yeah. and now now with that four eighty, is that include any utilities or, or no nope. no no that's just the rent uh utilities in different parts of town are kind of fun uh electricity is separate and uh after living in florida in summertime having the bill for air conditioning the house being up you know towards 250 dollars or so yes uh, <laughs> it's funny here our average monthly electricity if you look at the months where we have the ac on and not just average it's about 30 dollars a month mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's so, so you, yeah. you, you're doing thirty dollars a month on utilities as for just electricity. Just then, electricity. what's in this building? The hot water, the cold water, uh, your wastewater, uh, your heat, and then like building maintenance. It almost, it's almost like your property tax or like a council tax from the UK for all the like garbage pickup and that kind of thing. So that's all figured out based on the square footage of the apartment and how many people live here. Mm -hmm. And it's they just average it out, and it's about it's average it just make a round number about like eighty five ninety dollars a month. So eighty five ninety dollars a month for your covers electricity. everything but your electricity, like internet and phone kind of stuff. Again, heat, water, sewage, building maintenance, garbage, garbage collection, mm -hmm. you know, street lights, the parking lot, mm -hmm. all that. So it's condo fees, it's just, property say, tax, it's mm -hmm. utilities, all kind of wound up in one. Happy monthly bill. And, and it's based on how many people live in your home. So how many live here in your square, square footage. footage. And the electricity, I wanted to point out, that is for being here all day, every day, because our offices are here. So we're not switching off and just running refrigerators and you know those things that are just running in the background. It runs our computers, our printer, whatever else You're we're using. Cooking appliances. Cooking Everything's appliances, like, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we take most of our midday meals here, mm -hmm. if, unless we have a meeting that we're going out for a meal. But um, yeah, so it's a little bit more than your average expense on the electricity because we're here so much of the time. That's cool. That's that's yeah. fantastic. And internet then is the internet, which covers um, it's a package. So it's the internet, it's cable and a landline with free calls to the states. Mm -hmm. Free, free, calls, free to calls to the states? Yeah, up to um, an hour or two. Okay. I was using it's voice over internet, but it's- uh, Oh, it's, it's a VoIP phone. phone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's regular, it looks like a regular phone, but it's voice over internet. Okay, that's, the, that, that's like what we have with our Skype. So, yes. okay, so yeah. it's a, yeah. a VoIP plan. Okay, yeah, cool. It's like 40, but it's included. <laughs> yeah, it's included. It's like $40 a month. Nice. That's, that's your top package. Do you have a cell phone in Serbia? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're the two of them are about maybe forty bucks a month. Okay, forty for for, for, for so twenty each approximately. Yeah. Is that yeah. uh, unlimited data and unlimited data and uh, more call time and text than we we need to know every hour. Wow. I used to do the math as far as the cost of the phone and which package and where kind of said where's the most bang for your buck kind of and the least money out of your pocket so that one so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we haven't bothered with the car since we moved here. Mm -hmm. um, there are four bus lines that come within a two minute walk of this apartment that can take us just about anywhere we need to be mm -hmm. in the city or connect us with the next bus. So we think the public transportation here is very, very good. And they keep their buses forever. There's a few of them I think are coal fired, but they still run. <laughs> um, they have wooden seats. They have to be one seat, but uh, it's about $25 a month for a bus pass per person, unlimited use anywhere in the city. If we need a car, we'll hire one. Uh, yeah. Eating out and stuff, we don't eat out a ton of times, but maybe if you include my pub visits. Yes. I mean, eating out, <laughs> it's not real expensive here, but maybe $100, $120 a month for that kind of thing. And how often are you going out, the two of you? For a meal, maybe. maybe two times a, a month. month. Maybe yeah. one times a month. And it might be that we go into the square for that pizza, um, we had our anniversary. We went over to a really nice restaurant just a couple blocks away from here. It's a steak restaurant. It's excellent. If you're in Nova Zed, you've got to go to WRH. Um, but yeah, and we don't. That was a pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I support our small business owners. I like putting up um, TripAdvisor's um, Google Map recommendations and everything. 
Um, and I really do like going around our neighborhood and supporting our small shops. The people in Piazza, I have my favorite booths that I go to okay, and things yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, and yeah. then while we're on that, like groceries and stuff, Mary did figure that one out for me. It's about 350 bucks a month. 350 a month on and groceries? groceries. Um, and you're eating meat. Oh yeah, we're eating meat. Meat. We are eating some of the higher price stuff in the grocery store because, hey, we've been out of the out of the United States for so long. But there are some Heinz recipe things that we want to buy and things. So I'm not worried about. I'm looking for some labels, but then looking for the best substitutes for them. So Perfect. it's not the baseline groceries. Now, Paul, you brought up a very important topic for a lot of people that might be watching. Peanut butter? No, no, no. The, the pubs. The, the pubs. pubs. Yes. So yeah, I know that was incorporated into the restaurant budget of $120, so you guys yeah. go out a couple times. So when you go out to a pub, first off, because we're, we still haven't done our beer challenge yet, what the, the best beer is, what's your favorite Serbian beer? Oh, I don't know. I have a favorite. There's too many good ones. Too many good ones? There's yeah. so, I mean, the craft beer industry here over the past three, four years has exploded. And um, it's hard to say. I mean, it is really hard to say. There are so many good ones. Now, I know buying a bottle of, like, Yellen and Lav from the local store, local shop on our corner, is roughly 58 to 65 cents a bottle. Right. Okay. When you go into a pub, what, what do you... Wait, what's what's the typical cost for a, a beer when you're sitting in a pub and if you go into a pub and buy like a pint of Yellen or Lab, one of the uh, the big brands like that, it's probably it shouldn't be over two hundred dinar for a pint. Yeah, that's a and that's a good price uh, when you compare oh. it to what you pay for. Oh, you go to for the states, a, it's five pound, uh, five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. In the UK, it was like almost five. Uh, Some places was almost five pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, for a pint. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, the craft beers usually run closer to like between 300 and 400 dinar, so 3 to $4, okay. depending okay. on the brewery. And in the restaurants, they also offer wine, which many of them offer the local wines. Because just outside of Novosad in Fusca Gora, there are vineyards, and uh, the wines are served. There's a beautiful um, wine festival in Shremsky Karlovsky, just on the other side of uh, the bridge. Um, outside of Novosad, that has a wine festival that's great that they will show you how to pair it with foods and different things. The most expensive bottle of wine I've ever seen here, local, was about $20. That's fantastic. Most of it, most of it yeah. is um, five, six, seven dollars bottle, somewhere in that range. There's stuff that's even less. Um, so, and you don't see a lot of, like if you've been the UK, you go into a grocery store like a Tesco and you see a lot of South African wines, a lot of South American wines, and they're inexpensive. Very inexpensive. Here you see mostly Serbian wines, about in that same price. And, and Serbian wines have a very good reputation for being really good quality. Exactly. And so um, for the viewers that are not familiar with it, you're you're not losing out on that really good world quality of wine oh, no, it's not, not, oh, no, not, no. not at all. we're, we're not talking good. the mad dog thunderbird of, <laughs> of uh, europe no and, but, <laughs> no, if they you, probably have. but if you are want, wanting a wine that's not made here locally you can go into the grocery store and my favorite wine is a pinot grigio you can get that and it's only four dollars for a bottle of pinot grigio Let's talk about your healthcare medic, medical expenses. What, what have you experienced here? Uh, medicines are cheap. I mean, really cheap. Um, I don't think you're gonna find any uh, brand name drugs anywhere. They're all they're all generic substitutes, but um, they're dirt cheap. I mean, I had to get some uh, amoxicillin. Had some oral surgery done a few weeks ago, and five days, so ten doses. I think it was under two dollars for amoxicillin. Oh, so that's like a generic in this. Yeah. It's less than a generic in the states. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. so with insurance. Yes. And this is just all. You know, this is just walk into the, the pharmacy with a, a script and you know, all set. So medications are really, really. If you, if you don't mind me asking, um, the oral surgery. What? Um, and, and again, just disclose what you want. 
was what was the price of the oral surgery or how, how did how was that scheduled and is, uh, do you have insurance here? I don't have dental insurance. So um make it a short story. Back when I broke my crown, I figured just go ahead and get a crown. And uh, they were going to just do replace the crown, then they looked at the, the area of the tooth and they said, No, you need a root canal. I said, Fine, go ahead, been there, done that. And he went to start the root canal, I said, Nope, nope, your roots are infected. We can't do a root canal, we have to take the extract tooth. I won't go into the 80 minutes that took, but <laughs> the short part of it is a crown costs about $100. Oh, wow. With my That's insurance, great. it was 1800 mm -hmm. for When I, the crown that they replaced was a good 15 years old. And when the dentist was done and everything was fine, and um, this was right before we were leaving to go to the States, so he made sure everything was fine before, so before we went. He said, okay, Paul, he goes, how much would this have cost in the U.S.? <laughs> He's curious. And I said, Alex, 16, 15, 16 years ago, with insurance, that crown that cracked that started this whole problem cost me over $600. I won't tell you what he said, even with a mask on, I could tell. <laughs> um, so uh, it was $90 for a crown, and the work involved to, to do the crown. I'm having two implants done, and they're like uh, $700 each. I know I need to get it done and ask somebody for a you know, reference for a dentist, because I know a guy, he called him while we're, we're sitting eating lunch, he calls him, he said, yeah, can you go in like at 2 o'clock today? I said, yeah, where is he? Get the address? Fine. Said, oh, you need an x-ray. Usually, a dentist does the x-ray. No, you go to an x-ray place. You go to an x-ray shop. And what and does an x-ray run you? A regular, just regular, you know, small area, x-ray, 400 dinar. So 400 dinar is $4. Four dollars. Yeah. Uh, panoramic was $12. Wow. When they needed a, they needed a 3D one for, when they were doing the work for the implants, and that was $30. And it was walk in, wait a few minutes, shoot the x-ray, here's your x-ray, then you wow. it. There's some dentists in town that actually, if you go to them and they say, okay, you need this, this, and this, if it's over a thousand euros, so over roughly 1200 US, they'll pay your lodgings while you're in town for your- uh, They'll pay your lodging? Mm -hmm. So if so you're coming for, if you're coming for a- Dental, dental vacation, a medical vacation, people do it. Medical tourism. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it definitely would pay off. So yeah. 12, 1,200 euros or more, the dentist no, is paying. No, 1,000 euros. 1,000 euros, 1,200 oh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, US. Yeah. The dentist is paying for your, so your, pay for your lodging. lodging. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. so that's quite the break. Yeah, and Paul can explain the health insurance that we have. But I just went, knew pretty much what was wrong with me, went in, told the doctor, this doctor's group has English speaking nurses and she made sure, actually Sarah gave me her phone number. So if I have to go in, she'll make sure she's at the location that, because they have a couple locations oh, throughout fantastic. the city so that she can help me get the service that I need. I walked in and for the price of $40 was seen, given our, my prescription and an ultrasound was done on my kidneys just to make sure everything was as it should be. Wow, and, that's uh, and the infection I thought I had wasn't going any further. So, so that's forty dollars out of pocket, not counting insurance being involved right. at all. Uh, right. Our insurance we have is like catastrophic, like emergency insurance. That's, that's, you have to have it to have a visa. So uh, and that runs for the two of us about one hundred and twenty bucks a month. So uh, as far as your total budgets at this point, what, what, are, what are we looking at a month that you are coming out of pocket to, uh, <laughs> for your lifestyle here in uh, serving? $1,390. That's impressive. And that's including, I, I added in there an average of, of like 30 bucks a month for our visas, because it's about $360 for the two of us for yeah. an annual visa, yeah. Um, that's, so that's, that's rent, electricity, all the other utilities, TV and all that, groceries, medications, dining, entertaining, transportation, our mobile phones, health insurance, and our visas. To our viewers, that is a husband and wife. That is not a single. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. So, 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 but no kids, no pets, no bad habits. Well, I smoke cigars, but I, I get those delivered. <laughs> we know that there's visa stuff that we've spoke to an attorney about. 
where if you own a home, you can live in and get residency in the country of Serbia. Mm -hmm. um, you can open up a corporation potentially and you don't need to really make money with the corporation, but you can be here under a, you gotta pay a monthly tax for that. But your situation is a little bit different. You're here uh, on a humanitarian uh, volunteer We're visa. We're on a volunteer visa. Yeah, we started a, a, an NGO, a non-governmental organization working with the Roma, the Gypsy Kids, helping them get education. But since we are not, don't have residency, we are volunteers for our own organization, which is a little weird, but uh, up until last year, it was six months. We had to renew our visa every six months, but it was never never an issue. But we've, we've definitely redefined the definition of volunteers. Most people come to countries like this in the past and just come for two or three weeks or a couple of months, and that's why they don't really have a category for us. We are long-term stayers, yeah. and really at this point, we're 63 and 62 years old. Um, we're not planning on leaving anytime soon. So we're really hoping that the residency will happen so that, again, we can cut one more cost of visas sure. out of our yeah. uh, budget. And the hassle. Uh, yeah, yeah, and that, and yes. Um, this Fortunately, is just one thing. Work now. It's... Yeah, it's just one thing that we have to bother our dear friend to go in and do it because it's all in. Cyrillic and it's all in Serbian um, and in situations like visas you don't want to assume that anyone understands you because and you understand what they're trying to say so always having a Serbian with you when you do legal stuff is very important. Do you want to give a plug for your um, your organization. Uh, or volunteer oh. for your organization? A yeah. uh, short version, it's called the Propel Initiative, which is a U.S.-based 501c3 for our American viewers. Uh, there's Propel Serbia here, a uh, sister organization. It's a uh, simple concept. The Roma kids, the Gypsy kids, a lot of them, the parents can't afford to send the kids to school. I mean, school is free, tuition-wise, but the school books, the school supplies, you know, sneakers, you know, phys ed kit, that kind of stuff, they cannot afford it. And a lot of times these kids just don't go to school or they do, they're never well equipped. We raise money through a sponsorship program to help the kids get the stuff they need and then encourage the parents to make sure the kids go to school and help however we can, education related. Um, That's great. You know, so simple things too, like, like bus passes, like the kids in some villages need to come into Novosad from high school. high school. Yeah. And they need a bus, you know, they need a bus pass. Okay, that's educational related, do it. Some kids need glasses, we'll do that. Um, but we, our focus is on the educational aspect. We, we can't solve every problem, so we could we'll do our best to solve one as you know, best we can. Total kids we've either helped, I mean, if you look at all the kids we've helped and are helping, it's about 150. I think last year there was 118 Fantastic. that we were able to help with either school books and or supplies and their sneakers and backpacks and, and things like that. And one more thing that I want to say is that because we're doing a video about our home and life in Novosad, is we also take teams in the summertime we do when the world is healthy we do camps for the kids and we call them education camps but they're just learning about a book that is on their recommended book list or a topic that we think the kids are going to be interested we develop some curriculum for that and then we have camp for four days so if you feel like you want to be part of a team you know, let us know about that as well, because we love having visitors and you will definitely get a good taste of the culture here and uh, with um, visiting the city and having a cultural day, but then also falling in love with the kids and, and the, the whole place. It's a great place okay. to live. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, Paul, Mary, thank you again for bringing us into yes, your home you. and sharing oh, with us your life. Oh, it, it was. Uh, I, it's enlightening. You know, yeah, very, very enlightening. We hope we've educated the viewers on uh, what it's like to live in Serbia, what the costs are like, and if it's within the ability for that person that wants to come to Serbia, if they're able to figure out the correct visa opportunity, there's there's different fits. So um, it's it's a definitely a less expensive, affordable alternative to living in the U.S., but you're taking advantage and doing something 
Oh, yeah. Great for the community. So that's uh, very commendable. Yes, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Mary and Paul are definitely on a mission here to help out in the community. And we hope that you'll think about supporting them. Their link for their not-for-profit is in the video description. We took a tour with them around their neighborhood, checked out some of the shops. We uh, went to the farmer's market and we also took a lunch break. As a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling the world. We're retired and we're trying to see what it's like to live in different countries and experience what the cost of living is like and bring that to you. So if you haven't already given this video a like or subscribe to the channel, please do so and follow along as we try to bring different opportunities and cultures to you. If you're looking at moving abroad or considering it, we hope to answer some of those questions for you. So thank you for joining us today. And until next time, have a great day, everybody.